All right, I got Dr. Mike Von Thielen on the show. He's a TEDx speaker, best-selling author, and world record holder. Dr. Mike, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, Joel. It's going to be fun. Man, I'm excited to jazz out with you. You, uh, you are a world record holder in swimming. You train, a, uh, uh, you train Olympians and professional athletes, but you're also an expert in just mindset and, and health too, and stem cells, all this stuff you do. So really excited to jam out with you. You've got this new book out though called The IZOD Method, and I want to open it up with that. Like this is... The, the subtitle is Unleash Your Superpower, Optimize Productivity, Focus, Free Up Valuable Time, Live Stress-Free, Upgrade Your Body and Brain. Dr. Mike, it sounds too good to be true. So why the <laughs> heck did you come up with this, this idea to write this book? It sounds like the perfect you know, mind, body, and spirit. And what the heck is the IZOD method? You're there, Joel? Yeah, did that come through? Yo, you're cutting out. It's like something like a buffering type of thing, I guess. Yeah, can you hear me? Now, yeah, now it's good. All right, let's see how it goes. I'm looking on your end, and it says like 47% uploaded, which is pretty low, so I don't know what's going on. But um, if you can hear me, let's just try to – we'll try to record with this. Worst case scenario, I can always record in Zoom. All right, yeah, it's um, my connection's good, so I don't know. All right, but now but I hear you just from the beginning. So you asked about the book? Yeah, here, I'll, I'm going to re-ask the question. I'm just going to edit yeah. all that out. So, He's good. All right, so you've got this new book called The IZOD Method, and it's let, let me read the subtitle. Unleash your superpower to optimize productivity, focus, free up valuable time, live stress-free, upgrade your body and brain. Dr. Mike, it, honestly, it sounds too good to be true. So what the heck is The IZOD Method, and uh, uh, how'd you come up with that? Well, IZOD stands for in the zone on demand. A lot of people told me, well, that's a little, uh, you know, clothing uh, brand with a little crocodile like Costa. I didn't even know that. But IZOD is in the zone on demand because, you know, when we think about in the zone or flow state, we're thinking about athletes, right? But I believe everybody, you know, no matter who you are, can learn the skill on how to get in the zone on demand, which means is winning, focusing, getting things done. Be the best you can be. And that's not something that's, that is a talent or something that only athletes have. As I said, it's something that you can learn. It's something, the skill that you can acquire so you can be the best you can be. And that's the eyes up method. And it all came to fruition, basically, when I thought it was important to write about it. Of course, during the pandemic, um, I was the CEO of a stem cell clinic. The pandemic came. We closed the doors. And here I was like, okay, what's next? And a doctor friend of me called, uh, of mine called and said, hey, can you help out screening medical marijuana patients in the state of Florida? It's legal. I said, sure, I'll help out. So I ended up talking to 100 people at least every week with ADHD, depression, anxiety, uh, you know, you name it, PTSD. And yes, there's drugs and therapies out there, but I really quickly found there was a common denominator. These people had no purpose in life. They were just going with the motions, bombarded with work. Uh, you know, unable to catch up, uncertain about what tomorrow, next week, next month, next year brings also financially. And so putting myself in their shoes, yes, that would be worrisome. That would be fearsome. That would be this uncertainty could lead to mental, quote unquote, conditions like anxiety, depression. So my first seven books were all health related topics. But this last one, I just said, well, there's more to it. So in this book, I talk about purpose of life, about, about regaining control of your life over social media. Um, you know, getting your life scripted because control creates clarity. Clarity reduces all stress. And if you're in control, then there is no reason to be uncertain or fearful or worrisome. And so in this book, I talk a lot about biohacking, upgrading the body, the mind, etc. But I really felt I needed to, you know, help a broader, um, you know, um, uh, more people, uh, also the common people, not just top athletes, to really get over that hump. And so many times today, I identify purpose with them. Then I create a plan, goals and dreams, surround them with the right team. And then from that moment on, you're just looking forward. And those obstacles now become opportunities and stepping stones to reach those goals and dreams. And in the meantime, of course, now we're going to upgrade our mind and our body and we're going superhuman. Hence, unleash your superpower. Most people don't know what their superpower is because they never thought about it. 
most of us, especially in the professional world, we kind of know what it is and we're tapping into it, but we're not unleashing it. I just talked to a few hundred chiropractors in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale and, you know, they're, they're healers, but unfortunately they're waiting for a $40 check from that manipulation. And I said, you guys got the thing much bigger. You're tapping into your, you know, superpower, but you got to unleash it. You know, who else do you want to treat? How much money do you want to make? And so that's what the unleashing your superpower is, is about. We all have it inside. And so coaches like you and me, we just got to unleash that beast and let people go wild because the world needs all our superpowers today, Joe. <laughs> no, no doubt about that. And, you know, it's really interesting. You mentioned clarity several times. And I never really thought, wow, people with maybe ADHD or anxiety or depression, it's not necessarily that they have this diagnosis. It's just maybe they're just lacking that clarity. And if they build up a consistent string of moments and times where they're consistently not clear, then boy, yeah, you are going to feel overwhelmed. You are going to feel anxious. And then it also speaks to that identity piece, which I find so fascinating because I know my own background being a first responder and then pivoting and launching my own coaching business. And I see this a lot in the first responder community, but I'm sure you see this with the professional athletes as well. What about these guys who have trained, you know, for so many years? And I know some of them have been Olympic athletes from the day they were 18 years old. They were, that's all they knew. Their identity was I'm an Olympian. And then guess what? Well, now you're entering your forties. You're no longer an Olympian. Yeah. They have to figure out their identity. They don't even know who they are. They don't know what they're going to do. And so how often do you see that and helping these guys maybe pivot for the next, the yeah, second it counts for everybody, life, right? I had a podcast not too long ago. It was because that people all takes that clarity just retired, as well, right? And they think their life is over and it's not because that's when it starts, you know, because they have been living in service of what? You know, in their family, paying the bills. The kids are now out of the house. They're independent. Now it's your life. Because unfortunately, as you know, when we're born, we're pushed in a certain direction. Society tells us to go to school, to go to college, then work for somebody till we're 65. And then there's the golden years, which never come. Or our parents or teachers push us in a certain direction. If dad's a lawyer, he probably wants to go to law school. If mom's a doctor, he probably wants to go to med school. And so most of us do. And then finally, we retire. The kids are out of the house. We worked hard. The bills are paid. And then, okay, life is over. No, <laughs> now it's the time to, okay... What do I want to do? What are my passions? Uh, what is my purpose in life? And then, you know, full fire and passion, move forward and realize those dreams because we don't want to leave this world with all these regrets and all these chances that we didn't take, right? So it's the same with athletes, but also everybody else, right? Because we can identify somebody's purpose today, for example, like an athlete, but then at a certain point, that purpose can change, right? And you gave a great example with athletes. But it always, many times it changes based on something occurred in your life, whether it's health-wise or otherwise. Suddenly, you're 35 years older, you got brain cancer, you survive it, and now you feel, okay, God put me here for a reason. I'm going to be an advocate for these, you know, these patients, and I'm going to you know, do this, 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 and that. And it's certainly, it suddenly changes your direction. So it could be a single event, or you're just growing and you're learning, right, like you and I. I mean, you were in law enforcement and uh, first responder, and here you are, totally different, right? Because your experiences bring you somewhere. And, and that's when you leave a comfort zone, right? Because most of all, most of us are, and, and we all are in this world, we're modern slaves, right? We don't have shackles on, but we are slaves because we do what they want us to do, and they give us enough of comforts that we're doing it, right? We have TV, we have this, we have internet, we got food, we got to work hard, but we got everything we kind of want and we, they want us to keep in that comfort zone. But when we stay in there, we can't grow. We can't find our purpose. We can't be extraordinary. So with many of my mentees, I really teach what the comfort zone is uh, and then what to expect when you get out of there and what resistance you're going to get from your loved ones and your close ones, etc. And so when you're prepared for that, it's much easier. But even when I talked to millionaires in Miami a few months ago, it's like once you get out of the comfort zone and then end up in a new growth zone, eventually that new growth zone becomes what? Your new comfort zone. So now if you want to be a billionaire, even though you are a millionaire, well, guess what? You need to leave that comfort zone again and again. 
And so every time you leave that comfort zone because you're growing and then that new growth zone becomes your comfort zone, you may find a different purpose, you know? And so that has a little bit to do with what you said. Okay, my career is over. What now? And so you're going to have to find a different purpose, right? So. Yeah, hundred percent, man. You also mentioned dopamine and we live in such a dopamine rich, abundant world that it's really hard to stay present. And I know I work with a lot of fathers and a lot of dads, and they're always asking me, how do you stay present? <laughs> and so I'm curious for you, Dr. Mike, how do you put the fricking phone down and stay present and, and regain focus so that we can be productive? What, what is a, what's like a big tip or something that you would say out of all your research and something that you maybe even highlighted in the yeah, book? Yeah, there's a, there's a few things to consider. Uh, my clients. TED talk like, is exactly about how that, we, is how to how get into the present that, moment. That focus. Um, so you can look that one up. But um, when it comes to dopamine overload, I think the first thing is people need to understand what it is. We have five intelligence hormones, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and serotonin. And if those five hormones are optimal and in sync, that's when we're in the zone. Nothing can distract us. We're producing, we're winning, we're doing, we're, we'll be the best we can be. But when there's a dopamine overload, too much dopamine compared to the other hormones, then there's an imbalance and that causes brain fog, lack of attention, lack of focus. Uh, you know, fidgeting, unable to start a task, which is procrastination, and it's this vicious cycle, right? And that's because of dopamine overload. So why do we have a dopamine overload? Well, number one, it's our man-made foods and drinks, our energy drinks, our sugary foods gives us a squirt of dopamine. Dopamine, for the listeners that don't know, is the reward hormone. It feels good when your brain squirts a little dopamine. It's like getting a pet on the back, right? So we reach for that man-made food that's laden with sugars, that gives us a little bit of dopamine. That's number one. But number two, especially today, social media, right? So whenever somebody uh, likes our comment or hearts our Instagram, it consciously or unconsciously, we get that dopamine hit. And that's why we stay longer on social media than we want to. That's why we're addicted to it. That's why we continue to grab for that phone because it gives us that good feeling, that reward of dopamine. But now we'll get in the dopamine overload, the brain fog, et cetera. So step number one is realizing what a dopamine overload does to you. And so the first thing we need to do is control the dopamine overload by upgrading our diet and by regaining control of our social media, only using it, you know, when we need it to as part of reaching our goals from a productive point of view, not from a, oh, I'm just hanging around, I'm just causing a fight or, you know, uh, arguing and getting my negative emotions in there. No, we just got to, getting control again of that social media. Once we're in control, those hormones will balance and automatically all that procrastination and focus will be disappearing. So that's number one, I think. Um, number two, you know, when it comes to focus and production, especially when you look at our younger red generation, there's no structure in their life. Huh? When you ask 100 kids where to do their homework, it's on their bed, it's in front of the TV, it's on the kitchen table. I mean, rule number one, there needs to be a designated area to do a project or work or school. And so in the kitchen, that's where you eat. In the bed, that's where you sleep. You can't mix those areas. And so you need that area. When you're going to go work, you close the door, tell people not to disturb you, and then you got to put this off, right? Now, this is good for research because I remember when I had to take my bicycle to the library and, and find the book for two hours because nobody was helping me and then try to make some copies and going back home. Four hours, four hours. I mean, they can get that in one minute. So obviously they're blessed in that way. So take the advantage of it. But if you need something, look it up, then put it off because you don't want other people to interrupt you while you're producing, right? So only take it to your advantage. And then there's certain techniques. You probably heard about the Pomodoro technique. Uh, works for many people, may work for you, where you basically put on a timer and you really focus in that designated area, phone off, all, all other devices and apps off. 20, 25 minutes, timer goes off, a mandatory five-minute break, and you repeat that cycle four or five times. And it's amazing what you can get done because we all know, uh, we all heard about this statistic that we get 80% of our work done in 20% of the time, right? <laughs> so 80% of our time, we're just you know only producing 20%. But what if we could really focus with a Pomodoro technique and isolating ourselves. How much time would we free up just by doing that? You know, um, 
that procrastination, somebody's homework takes three hours, could be done in half an hour. They could have gone out playing with their friends and going for a beer or playing video games, but they didn't because they were procrastinating. They're just moaning about the homework instead of getting it over with, right? And then, um, yeah, that was the, that's the dopamine overload. I guess that's kind of, um, you know, um, the tip there, yeah. No, that's perfect. That, 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 that was, that was really, really nice. I I like the way you summarize that. And I never heard of, I really like that you brought light to the five different um, neurotransmitters and I never heard someone speak about it in such a way. So that's something I'm going to have to definitely check out your Ted talk and, and learn more about that because I think that's really interesting to see yeah. how, if those are not balanced in a way, then you're going to see you're going to see issues. You're yeah, going to see exactly. what, which might manifest as something that we call a symptom, which is ADHD or something ridiculous. And there's always a root cause, you know, on that note too, and I'm not too familiar with it, but you have a, I believe a supplement. Um, yeah. Well, created. it was the same thing so when I, I was talking to those these, people like during the pandemic. Is that They're correct? all on these drugs, well, butin, Ritalin, and a lot of them on Ederol. I heard of bad drugs, but I don't know much about them because it's a waste of my brain to learn about drugs. So, but anyways, I felt I had to uh, look at it now. And so a lot of people did seem to get the results, able to focus. But when I looked at it, increased heart rate, increased risk for heart disease, psychosis, seizures, and the list goes on. Not something I could recommend. So at that point, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Dr. Mike, isn't Adderall like <laughs> yeah, equivalent it's, it's to crack cocaine? Uh, what is it, schedule two? You can get addicted to that stuff pretty quickly, <laughs> right? So so anyways, so at least I was looking, okay, I got to work on purpose and this and this, but at least maybe there isn't a natural alternative that also get helps people to focus better without the jittery effects and without those harmful potential side effects, especially with long-term use. So these drugs are called smart drugs, but the natural alternatives are called nootropics. And there's many of them, right? Ginkgo biloba, bacoba, and all kinds of herbs and things that have been proven in scientific research to help with uh, memory and focus. But when I was doing my research, I stumbled upon a company, Claritin Z Health, and they identified um, a terpene from a specific type of blood orange or citrus fruit in Southeast Asia. And they named it BioCitroid. It's a patented name. Uh, but biocitroid at 30 milligrams or higher is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. So it works pretty quickly in 30, 40 minutes, uh, which is good to know because most supplements need to build up in your sim system for a few weeks in order to hopefully get a positive effect. And so when I came in, it's like, okay, what do we do here? We, we should put a few other ingredients in there to see if we get a synergistic effect. So then we put in L-tyrosine, which, you know, is the amino acid that helps with memory and focus. We put in uh, phenylalanine, which is another neuroagent that helps with photographic memory and focus. And then the last one, probably the best one, phosphatidyl, which obviously we find in all our fat cells, but also in our brain, which stimulates uh, NGF nerve, nerve growth factor. So that particular component really stimulates the formation of new brain cells and increases the neural connections and the transmission or the neurotransmitters. So when we combine those four, what we saw is that it seemed like they were balancing and optimizing those five intelligence hormones and help people to get into that zone or focus, uh, you know, for approximately four to six hours. So it would be good before homework, a work day, those types of things without any of the side effects. I wouldn't say it may not be as strong as the Adderall. So we were able to get a lot of people off Adderall and put it on Focus Plus because that's what it's called. You know, and for other people, it doesn't work. And, you know, just like many things. So I always say, Try it. Uh, your listeners even can go to trysmartpill.com and get a free sample. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, don't buy it, right? It's that simple. But ultimately, even with those nootropics, ultimately they're, they're, they're help. they can be helpful and they're not harmful in this case. But ultimately, we want to get control of our life and we don't need any of that stuff. You know, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, I love that. The last kind of piece on mindset that I wanted to ask you is this idea of work-life balance. Again, a lot of the men, the number one and number two complaint I hear from them is, Joel, how do you access presence? And then how do you balance work-life balance? How do you do it? What do you say to that? And I mean, again, you're working with some of the top people in the world and you yeah, wrote a so, book uh, really it's, outlining it's a, a great lot of these question concepts. In, in the so present moment, how do you let balance me talk about that first balance. because you know, when I was traveling around and working hard and my two daughters were still little. 
And I remember uh, one time I was home with my both daughters and my youngest one wasn't home yet. And so I asked the oldest one, where's, where's Aaron? And uh, because it's getting late and I was getting worried. And uh, she said, well, she told you yesterday she would stay at a friend's house, dad, but you never listen. Right. So that's pretty hard to hear. And then I started realizing that I'm not present in the moment. And that's that's when I had to do a little bit of research. And that's when a few years ago I stumbled upon breath work. And so today for me, that doesn't mean it works for everybody. But for me, when I want to be present in the moment, I do a reset breath, uh, which takes one minute. Right. And so that's what the, but that talk is about, too, is really to get from that sympathetic into the parasympathetic and really kind of get present in the moment. And so you can do that when you have family dinner, when you want to spend quality time with your loved ones, uh, before a business meeting. And especially if you have a team, if you want to produce, you all do it. Because, you know, when it's a business, somebody's on the phone, somebody's still thinking about the fight ahead when they left the house. And so nobody's really present. So one guy's talking or one woman's talking. But, but this can be applied to a group too, you know, before dinner, a business meeting, before a seminar, whatever it may be. So look up a reset breath. The best app for everybody to download is called The Breath Source. All the breath masters on the world are on this one app and you can download it for free. So learn how to breathe properly and learn the reset breath. It really pulls you into that present moment, you know. So that's a trick that I use to get into the present moment. But it becomes when it comes to balancing life, again, we just mentioned that 80% of what you produce is done in 20% of the time, all right? So that's where we're going to free up a lot of time is by really scripting, being in control of your agenda, being in control of your uh, calendar, and also asking yourself questions. What pro projects am I involved in? And which projects do not contribute to my personal goals and dreams? Get rid of them. <laughs> you got to start to learn to say no because we have many friends and colleagues and ask, hey, can you do this? Can you do this? And we always say yes and we get caught up and working with them and, and helping them out. And, you know, at a certain point, we got to start learning to say no to things that don't serve us. Um, I had a client not too long ago um, because when I help people with purpose, uh, this was an, uh, an eye surgeon, very successful, an immigrant from Cuba, very successful, big house, nice cars. He's done thousands and thousands of procedures. But we figured out, even though he's successful, it's not his purpose. His passion is music, believe it or not, right? But he's an eye surgeon. So... Here we are. Now we got to talk about the, getting out of the comfort zone, about what to expect the family is going to say, because they're living comfortably, uh, you know. So it's not that we have to drop everything, but we need to make a slow transition. And the way I do that is let's free up one hour per day to work on your true passion and purpose. And otherwise, you keep doing what you're doing. And eventually, you may want to transition or we freed up enough time. You can do both. Right. Or when you retire, uh, you know, we're ready for this. But um, then people immediately say, I don't have an extra hour. And, and that's always very fun to do because then it's like, hey, okay, run me through your day. And then suddenly they're binge watching or they're Netflixing, right? So there's two hours right there. Or they come home and they're tired. How come you're tired? Let's work on your diet. Let's work on your exercise because you're sitting in the couch doing nothing. Uh, or, you know, if it's an executive, I just say, okay, you're busy. You're traveling. There's, you don't have any free time. Okay, how many business meetings did you have today? Two. All right, how long were they? Well, we scheduled them for an hour each. Who cannot make a decision on a topic in 15 minutes? Tell me. So from now on, you schedule your minutes, 15 minutes, do yourself a favor and everybody else on that meeting a favor and no small talk. Get to the point, make the decision, move on. So I, I, I just opened up one and a half hour just by shortening your meetings. Your life is still busy, but now we can work at least an hour and a half on what? In this case, on your music are your true passion and your true purpose in life. And so we need to free up valuable time. That's what it's about. Because when we free up the time, we can spend that with our loved ones, right? And especially when it comes to business people and stuff, you know, whatever, <clears throat> there's always something more. There's always another flight. There's always another this. There's always another phone call. And so usually it's the loved ones that are left out, even during the weekends and the evenings, right? And that's why it's important for everybody to start scripting your life. And scripting also means is on the weekend, on Saturday morning, you're going to do this with the kids. On, on Saturday night, you're going to go on a date with your wife, whatever it may be. But you script that also, right? That's part of scripting. It doesn't mean you can't be spontaneous about your date. 
but you're going to script it. You're in control. And so that way you not overlook your, uh, your wife and your loved ones because you're going to pay for that later. So script everything, be in control of everything, get organized because that gives you clarity and you basically put that balance on paper and then you execute. So crucial scripting scheduling nope. has made a major impact in my own life. And you're right. If it ain't on the calendar, it ain't happening. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And I'm also really glad that towards the later ends of my police job, uh, I was in, I was working in the training department. It was the first time I was off the streets and I was yeah. working as a full-time <laughs> trainer. And so it was the first time yeah. I had actually experienced meetings. I never did meetings before because I was just handling calls and you are a hundred percent right. Meetings are complete bullshit. They're a waste of time. They're I, what I <laughs> yeah. found is it's most of the time it's 45 minutes of someone just loving to hear themselves talk about themselves. And I, yeah. I'm like, I'm always was like, we could end this yeah. in about 15 minutes or we could have handled this in an email. I am wasting so much time. So I'm glad you said that you're right. Let's go. Um, I wanted to ask you still, I guess one last kind of piece going into the mindset. And then I want to kind of talk about health with you. Cause that is something that you know a lot about. And then I want to get into a little bit of the biohacking and, and that cool stuff, but you are a freaking world record holder that doesn't come easy. And you work with Olympians, you work with elite athletes. And so I'm curious out of all your years of training personally, and just working with other professionals, when it comes to being on the podium, the top three athletes getting gold, silver, bronze. You're already in the Olympics, let's say. You're competing with the best of the best. That's my You guys are all the 100%. best. 100%. You know, what when people are asked, I mean, when top the podium, coaches are asked, even not. top golfers or top coaches that we know in the NFL, they usually answer, you know, how much is the mind, mindset involved in top performance? They usually answer 50 to 90%. No, it's 100%. <laughs> you know, and, and here's why, because the mind not only controls the body, controls disease, controls health, but the mind, the, the mind's also the blueprint to the future, to your failure or success, right? So the mindset is, is 100% because even when you look, and I, you know, I like to use usually the names Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, they were always in the zone. They never played a bad game. They lost games, but usually it wasn't their fault, you know? Remember Michael Jordan just... You know, this big fever in the playoffs, sick as hell, still makes the winning shot. That's called being in the zone, right? So, but what's the difference? Because, you know, supporters or people watching the game, they always say, oh, he or she had a bad game or, oh, he had a, he had a, he had a bad day or whatever it may be. They have good days and bad days. And so what's the difference? Because overnight their, their talents didn't diminish, diminish. their capacities or their uh, strength or their you know, physical, uh, you know, capacities, they didn't diminish, nothing diminished. So what's the difference? It's the mindset, right? So for some reason, they are distracted by something, whether again, it was something with the kids, a financial situation, something in the news, uh, you know, a fight with the parents, nobody knows, but they just are not in the zone, which means is they are just like a fraction of a second too late. You know, they anticipate a little bit later. And that's the difference between winning and losing when it comes to all talented people, all skills, you know, all in, in good shape. Those are all equals at that level, you know, or at least almost all equals. So when, when I think one of the major differences is when we talk about these types of sport is that when you're in the zone and you're not distracted by anything, you only have the end in mind. So you see many times professionals, if a professional golfer misses a putt, you know, it usually carries over a few plays. When a wide receiver, when the ball slips through their hands, it carries over a few plays before they recover from it. But when you have a Kobe Bryant or something like that, when he misses a simple layup, he's there on the other end of the court to block the other shot <laughs> as a response to it, right? Because they don't care about the miss right now. They only have the win or the end in mind. That's how focused they are. There's no distractions. And so that's kind of the difference between losing and winning. It's still the mindset. And so what, what athletes need to do, but also people, because it's not athletes, this is performance, this is entrepreneurs. If you want to crush your sale goals, if you want to crush that presentation in front of 1,000 people at a conference, uh, if you want to write that awesome piece of music, it doesn't matter what it is. You need to be in that zone. And so you need to work 
Number one on belief system, right? Because we're all limited by our false core beliefs based on the past. You know, people label those as failures, but all they are, as we know, are lessons, right? What did I learn? What lesson do I get with me today so I can be better? So, so we need to leave the past alone and we really need to be pulled forward by the future. What are our dreams? What are our goals? And we got to break those down, you know, in stepping stones daily. So every time we do something daily towards that big goal and dream, we find fulfillment and we know we're a step closer. And so we need to be pulled forward by the future, not by the past. And when it comes to belief system, well, a belief, a belief is a thought that we keep on thinking. It's, that's how simple it is. But knowing that you can change it at any time, it's just your choice, right? So we got to change our thinking because... If we believe, or if, let's do it the other way, if we have any doubt in our mind that we're going to beat this cancer, or if we have any doubt in our mind that we're going to win the Olympic gold, or if we have any doubt in our mind that we're going to get a flawless TEDx stock, then the universe has two options, failure or success. If we have no doubt that we're going to combat this cancer, win Olympic gold, swim world record, guess what? The universe only has one option, right? So the mindset is so important uh, across the whole spectrum of training or performing or realizing your goals and dreams. And ultimately, that's going to make the difference, right? Uh, that mindset. And then it comes down to power routines. We talked about a lot as well. All these different things that we talked about, you know, you need to, mo you need to figure out which elements of those. Uh, we all use the same elements, but which ones work for you and mold them in a morning routine, an evening routine. And so your whole... Day becomes a routine, working on your dreams. A, I have a dream routine and a biohacking, biohacking routine, a morning routine, an evening routine, right? So, but a routine is something that you can count on each and every time to deliver the results you want. And so when you look at a Kobe Bryant, you know, he was shooting hoops two hours before the other teammates came to the, to the, uh, to the court, right? And so it's something that works for that person. And so with my mentees, we go over all those strategies. We'll see what works for them, what doesn't work for them. And then we mold them into routines, which basically are habits. And if you do those every day, those incremental steps quickly become astronomical significant improvements in whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. So it, it sounds like there, there's some deep root causal things you need to do, which is like get rid of those limiting yeah. beliefs. Once you do that, then it's all about figuring out which routine yeah. is going to work best for you. Is it going to be visualization? Is it going to be like a power pose? Is it, you know, what is it going to be that's, that's going right. to get you into that zone state? And then you execute that and do that and rinse and repeat. So I'm curious for you being when back in the day as a world record holder, what was, what was your like pre-game routine? What was the pre-routine well, that you did to put you in the uh, zone? In my twenties, I was a Belgian record holder speeds, and I had man. some national championships there. But when you're young, you're invincible. You don't care about diet or strategy or being home on time or not drinking a beer. You're just invincible and you just train hard, right? Then I took a 22 year break and at age 46, I started swimming again. But now I don't have the endurance. I don't have the VO2 max. So I need to compensate for that. And I don't like to swim two hours a day that I used to do. I only swam before the full run three times, 75 minutes per week. And I went to the gym two times, 40 minutes. All my competitors swim at least two, three times more per week. But I started to biohack, meaning I'm going to take another advantage. If I'm competing against 50-year-olds, <clears throat> that's great. Let them train. But I'm going to make my, sure that my body is only 40 biologically, right? So that's where, you know, you know, my, my hydrogen inhalation comes in, my, uh, you know, uh, uh, power plates come in, my, uh, my diet, my hormones, my juicing, my mindset, all those types of things I'm going to do instead of swimming. Of course, I got to swim too, to get that what, what I like to call the unfair advantage uh, over everybody else. So. So that's where the biohacking comes in. And so even today, when you look at top athletes right now, NFL, NBA, golfers, there's so much out there they're not utilizing that could separate them from the rest. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. They don't know about biohacking. And there's so many things that you can do today, not just as an elite, yeah. but as the average person. Yeah. It doesn't have to I cost think... money. You don't have to get a hyperbaric chamber in your in your room. But there's there's foundations and fundamental things. For example, breath work that you can learn for free 
that may, may be one of the top biohacks in the world is learning to breathe properly in through the nose for five counts, out through the nose for six counts, increasing your oxygen efficiency by 300%. Who doesn't want that? Any athlete could benefit from that. So those are things that, that doesn't have to cost anybody. So everybody can start those biohacks. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're doing that. And I'm, I feel the same way. I, I cheat a lot of things. I always tell everybody for the last nine years since my first son was born, I ran out of time. I, I didn't have time to go do CrossFit and jujitsu like I did, plus yeah. work, you know, 16 hours a day. And so I, that actually started my biohacking journey. And till this day, right, Mike, I had literally a half an hour to work out before I came and chatted with you. Yeah. I ran outside did a three minute cold plunge, yeah. came inside. I jumped on my vibration platform, turned on my red light and I have an X three bar and I did three, three different workouts. I did uh, a push press, a chest press yeah. and a squat. It's, it's more effective uh, all, than most one people set to failure. Hours, and I was done in like 10 <laughs> minutes and I'm ready to rock and roll with you. And a hundred percent, man. And, and that's what I do, but it's a practice and I'm consistent with it. Yeah. I don't miss too many days. I'm, I probably, you know, I work out six days a week, but it's only yep. 10 to 20 minutes, but I'm consistent. So I love what you said. And it's just about building in those habits and just sticking with it over and over. That's and by correct. the way, That's when you correct. have a system and you have consistency and you have habits, you create a new identity. And so there you go. Um, all right. I want to talk to you a little bit more about health because you have an entire chapter on the book talking about mm -hmm. um obviously health, biohacking, and well, this idea actually, called Toxemia, uh, explained that which I never heard in, about. In my first what book the heck in 2014, Health for Life, but, you know, it helped many people understand health because, of course, the big pharma and current, or con current conventional medicine tries to make it very complicated, and it's actually simple, but it has to be complicated, so we have to go to a doctor and we have to listen and take the drugs, right? But you need to be in control of your own health. So when I explain Toxemia and also explain how health works, you know, there's a lot of aha moments and then people can start taking care of themselves. So toxemia literally means toxins in the blood. But in a little bit more detail, what it really means is that as part of daily living, as part of our normal metabolism, we obviously produce waste toxins. But in a healthy organism, those toxins are removed by the bowels, the kidneys, the skin, etc. So no harm is done, right? But in today's world and the things that we eat and everything else, we ingest and are exposed to far more toxins than the body possibly can eliminate. So now these toxins accumulate in our blood and our body, and that's really what toxemia is. Now, what does this toxemia cause in our body? Two major things. Number one, these toxins are stealing an electron from a healthy atom, which becomes unstable, which we all know as free radicals. I don't have to expand on free radicals, but they cause, of course, we need free radicals because they're part of the immune system, but excess free radicals cause damage on a cellular DNA level. So that's number one. Number two is even easier to understand. When, when there's toxemia, in other words, when there's more toxins coming in than we can possibly eliminate, then we're in a state of emergency. The body does needs to do whatever it can to try to neutralize those toxins. And so that's a state of emergency. And in conventional medicine, we actually have a term for that. A term for that. It's called systemic inflammation. And now conventional medicine even agrees that systemic inflammation is the cause of over 90% of all disease, right? So that's why I say there's only one cause of all disease. It's toxemia. So now how do we prevent all disease? Well, it's simple. Theoretically, we need to keep toxemia in check. We need to reduce as much as possible the intake and exposure to toxins. Which toxins? Man-made foods, man-made drinks, over-the-counter prescription medication, household products, cleaning products, cosmetic shit that we put on our face and our body. And last but not least, electromagnetic frequencies, right? A major uh, source of toxins. So we need, to do, we need to do whatever we can to mitigate that while simultaneously increasing the nutrients that fight free radical damage, repair our DNA and fight systemic inflammation. And we, if we can just tip that balance, we will be bulletproof against any and all disease. It, that's toxemia. I, I love it. And that's something that I preach as well. It's just, you know, I don't even believe I believe that the toxins that we're exposed to, like everything you just listed is what creates the deficiency. And then that's what makes you feel Correct. sick. And the more, if your body can't, if it's not in that homeostasis, it just can't fight it off. So I love how you, you phrase that. And that, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Um, you also have a chapter in the book called Absolutely. repairing your DNA. 
Dude, how no, the heck do no, you repair no. your DNA? That sounds, I mean, no, are, see, are, we actually like have an go to innate Panama DNA and get repair stem cells? system. Like, it's what called do I the ARTD1 do? repair system. It's a system of 17 enzymes. And so whenever there's damage to the DNA, you know, uh, some of the enzymes get signaled, they go there, they build a matrix, repair the DNA. It's a system that everybody has. So why does it not work in 95% of us? Because this system requires fuel. And the fuel for the system is NAD+. So that's a popular biohacking compound that everybody's been talking about the last two, three years, right? So we need enough NAD+, in order for that DNA repair system to work, right? So where do we get NAD+, well, we can supplement it, we can get IVs, but more importantly, there's two precursors to NAD+, tryptophan in a lesser degree, but the number one precursor to NAD+, is niacin. So niacin is a good supplement to take also to stimulate your NAD+. And what we need to do is not only think about how to produce it, but how to not deplete it. And the way we're not depleting it is not eating four or five hours before we go to bed. And also electromagnetic radiation and frequencies deplete the NAD plus stores. Well, so that's what's my best-selling book. It is a very practical guide that tells you hundreds and hundreds of things that you can do inside the house, outside the house, and to your own body to really mitigate that radiation from our Wi-Fi routers, our smart appliances, the fluorescent light that's shining on me to get better light, and all those types of things. And that's where grounding and all those types come in. All those things come in. So, um, so NAD Plus is the fuel. So if we can assure enough NAD Plus in our body, our body repairs our damaged DNA by itself. Wow. Okay. I didn't know, I didn't know that. And I know I've heard a lot about NAD and NMN has become all the rage now as a better, from my understanding, better bioavailable form of absorption. Well, it does a lot NAD. more, right? It has to do with genetics um, and no DNA. It also that, helps with mitochondrial function and many DNA. other That's things. Amazing. But when it comes to DNA repair, NAD plus is the fuel. The other thing that people overlook is NADPH. NADPH is the battery of our cells. We all heard the mitochondria is the energy factor factory, which is true, but nobody talks about the battery. That's NAD+. So what it means is NAD+, is an electron reservoir. We, we just spoke about free radicals. We all know what neutralizes free radicals. It's antioxidants. And everybody learned during the pandemic what they are, right? And they take your vitamin C, D, zinc, selenium, glutathione, the list goes on. The problem with those... Um, uh, antioxidants is is once we take them, they donate an electron to that unstable free radical, and that free radical now is neutralized, but this antioxidant becomes immediately useless. Okay, so it only can do that once. But what if we had an electron reservoir in our body, and we could donate that same vitamin C, more and more electrons, and continue to give that same vitamin C electrons? Do you see how exponentially we would be much, much more effective in neutralizing those free radicals? So, and how do we keep our NADPH uh, high? That's where the whole hydrogen story comes in. If we do hydrogen inhalation or drink hydrogen water, then we keep our NADPH levels high. And it also helps with the NAD+. So hydrogen now comes an important uh, element for us to get into our body when it comes to, you know, um, when it comes to antioxidant activity and also repair of DNA. Hydrogen itself is a very powerful antioxidant, and it's the only one that can get inside the cell because our vitamin C, D, uh, selenium, zinc, etc., they're all charged, so they cannot enter the cell. Uh, hydrogen is not charged. It's the smallest molecule and the lightest element on the planet, and it's able to get in the cell and protect the RNA, the DNA, the mitochondria, and all the proteins. So think about, for example... This is just an example, Parkinson's patients, MS, stroke, anything, dementia, Alzheimer. If we can inhale a hydrogen and get it in there, theoretically, we immediately stop the progression because now the cells are protected, right? So that's what I'm doing with a lot of my patients too. So that's how everything, eventually everything ties in, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great to know. I just interviewed a hydrogen expert and um, it really fascinating. Yeah. That That is a really fascinating element and uh, some really cool stuff happening there. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I wanted to ask you everything that you know, and this is a tough, tough question. And I know, and if you have to give me more than one, that's fine. What's your favorite biohack? Most bang for your buck or that you're doing, or actually I don't want to say most bang for your buck. What, 
out of all the ones that you do well, probably on a regular basis, just years, which one do you, really get into do you kind of find? Not just to get into the present moment, really but really to... And, um, it also gets me in a meditative state. Meditation never worked for me. My mind's going 100 miles per hour, so I never got into a meditative state. But when I really focus on my breath, everything clears because I'm so focused on my breath. And that's when I get actually into a meditative state, uh, breathing properly, get you in the present moment. So there's so many benefits uh, to breath work. I think it's the cheapest and probably one of the most powerful biohacks right now. Uh, obviously enough and clean water. I drink hydrogen water and I inhale hydrogen uh, juicing. I juice every day. I only eat one meal a day. I think we're only designed to eat one meal a day. Biologically, physiologically, we're only designed to eat one meal a day. Um, and so the rest of the day, I just juice and take some supplements and I'm never hungry either because I give my body everything it needs. So it's not putting out that hunger signal. You know what I mean? So those probably would be the, the top three that I can think of right now without mentioning any expensive technology, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. And I was going to ask you too, just, I was going to ask you, you know, any rituals. I mean, obviously you have your, you explained earlier, your, I think you mentioned the dream routine, the exercise routine, the nighttime routine. But uh, yeah, I was curious, just like, what is a typical day or like, what are some of the yeah, big so rituals I, I can briefly that you make some sure points that you of my morning and evening routine. So morning routine, obviously, zone. get up, I drink hydrogen water. Um, and then I usually immediately do a brain dump on a piece of paper. I want my mind clear. So I put everything on there. Certain things go into my to-do list and the other things just go in the garbage, right? Uh, I do a brain dump. I don't eat breakfast. Breakfast is the least important meal of the day by far. So there's no reason for breakfast. And uh, then I do my exercise, you know, um, and that just varies. I used to swim all the time, but I have a shoulder issue right now. So um, I may just go be outside and do a few minutes of breathing with Tai Chi or Qigong. Whether it's 10 minutes or not, it doesn't matter. There's the exercise, the fresh air. Usually I try to go outside and do the grounding while I do. I, that's why I want to go outside and not inside, bare feet. So it discharges all the negative energy into Mother Earth. And now I'm fresh to go. My digestive system is not burdened with cornflakes and milk or bacon and eggs and, uh, and hash browns, right? And so I can go with my day. So that's a very short morning routine. The evening routine is a little bit longer. I make sure that my one meal a day is early in the evening. So it has time to digest before I go to sleep. Otherwise, I won't get into a deep delta sleep when my body is still digesting. Uh, an hour before I go to bed, all stimulation goes off. No need to do another business call. You're going to make the wrong decisions anyways. Uh, TV off. Certainly don't watch a horror movie. <laughs> but put everything off. And that's when maybe you want to read something you want to read or talk to your partner or spend some time with the kids or do something which calms you down, takes you away from your job and everything else. And then when I go to bed, uh, I do that uh, one minute visualization, uh, one to two minutes. The reason why I do that is because one of those guys, like I said, my mind would be going, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. Then I got to go there. What am I going to say to this guy in this meeting? What should I say there? And I'll be awake all night, right? So what I do is within one to two minutes, I run to the next 24 hours. And at each point of contact, I make the right decision. And I do that in one, two minutes. So now I can go to bed because I don't have to worry about tomorrow because I just went through the 24 hours. And now I can get to into a deep delta sleep uh, because that's important for what? Repair, regeneration, wake up refreshed versus uh, I got to get up. Amazing. Thanks. I love that, dude. Thanks for sharing that. I want to wrap things up here in a little bit, but I wanted to ask you, you know, I know you just came out with the new well, book. Well, I do a lot of keynote any speaking. Exciting so now I'm trying to figure out how do I actually get paid uh, what's, well for What's those, next for right? you? <laughs> I'm opening the uh, Biohacker Expo in Miami, uh, February 23 till 25. I'm the keynote opener over there. So that's going to be fun. Uh, I'm working on some online courses uh, right now too. So I got to have something from the stage to sell or to people that want to dive deeper into this. So all this kind of stuff becomes online courses, writing and dive into all those details. So that's what I'm working on. We just uh, last August, we had a, a VIP retreat in Costa Rica, limited group of 30 people. It's, it, the, the response was so overwhelming. We put another one up already, uh, which is going to be August the first till the sixth of 2024. It's only going to be 30 spots. Um, it's very affordable, but we're in the jungle on 40 acres, uh, you know, with all the wild animals and we do breath work and we just biohack all week. We eat healthy, organic, local sourced food. So check out that on my website too. There's pictures, there's videos. 
Uh, don't be late. It's very affordable. It's VIP because it's unique. It's not VIP because it's expensive. <laughs> so those are the things. Yeah, check it out. It's, uh, it's like-minded people that end up there anyway. So it's a great my network, kind of trip. great synergizing, uh, <laughs> doing a lot of breath work. Uh, we did the cold bath. We do all kinds of, kinds of activities all day long, obviously. Very cool, man. Um, I want to wrap things up and then just uh, leave no, this. I mean, we covered all of stuff, man. We can keep going for a few more hours. So you can always have me back on if you want. But um, uh, no, just, uh, you know, I would say generally, <clears throat> wherever you are in life, you know, um, today's a new day. You know, there's nothing we can do about the past, um, but we can take action today because the only place we can work from is today. It's the present moment. So learn how to get into the present moment. You know, <laughs> Nicely said, get your shit together, get in control of your life, in control of your health, on your agenda, your calendar. You will be amazed how much free time you end up with, you know, wasting time on so many things that we do and just take control of your health. And if you don't know how to do that, there's guys like Joel, myself and many other functional medicine doctors and coaches that at least can guide you in the right direction. And it does not have to cost money. No excuses, no excuses, no excuses. Love that. Dr. Mike Van Thielen, tell everybody where they can connect with you on either social, social or media, just but I'm not. go to your but website and find out what you're up to, what website, you're doing, and all that good unlimited. stuff. Com. My books are there. Mentorship programs are there. You can schedule a free 20-minute Zoom call with me if you want to talk to me, see if I can help you. The Costa Rica VIP retreat is there. Everything you may want to have is on biohackingunlimited.com. Thanks for having me, Joel. Amazing. Dr. Mike Van Thielen, thanks for being on the show, brother. I appreciate you.